Hey there, pre-med. In this video, we're going to talk about how to use, and more importantly, how not to use flashcards when you're studying for the MCAT. There's a lot of pros to using flashcards in your studying. It promotes active recall. You're actively retrieving the information from your memory instead of reading passively. It allows for spaced repetition, which is a hugely important skill for any kind of long-term learning. I use spaced repetition in all of my programming, and flashcards are great for allowing you to go back to subjects over and over and check your understanding. They also give you immediate feedback. You know right away whether you're getting a card right or wrong. And they're kind of fun and easy to use, right? It's pretty quick to go through flashcard decks. You get a little dopamine hit when you get cards correct. It almost feels like a game, which is really nice because it can be motivating to use in your content review when you're studying for the MCAT. There are some drawbacks too, though, of using flashcards. Number one, they're limited, literally. There's only so much you can put on a card, and so they're really only useful for simple, clear definitions and ideas. They don't have any context or integration, right? They're all kind of standalone terms. And most of science, especially in the MCAT, is integrated. It requires you to understand multiple ideas at once and make connections between concepts and subjects. Flashcards don't really allow you to do that. Third, it promotes rote memorization, right? It's very tempting to just, oh, I got the words right on the card without really understanding what they mean or how to apply them. Number four, they're really difficult to make, right? If you're doing a lot of cards, I'm sure you've been in this situation, you write a ton of flashcards out and then you don't even have time to review them, which is the point of the flashcards. Or you go on the other end and you use a pre-made deck, which takes less time, of course, but those have their drawbacks too because they're not made for you. And a lot of memorization comes from writing things in your own words and developing your own understanding. A pre-made deck is going to limit the benefit you get from using flashcards because you didn't write them yourself. Finally, it's easy to cheat on flashcards. I'm guilty of this. I'm sure you are too, or you go, yeah, I knew that, and you put the card in the correct pile where really you didn't know it, and so it can give you a biased understanding of where you're at with all of these concepts. So before we get into exactly how to use flashcards for your MCAT prep, I want to remind you to subscribe to this channel. I'm Amanda Brem, and I've been an MCAT coach for over five years now, so my videos will help you learn essential MCAT content that I find really important on test day, help you build test day skills and strategies, and of course, prepare for your exam without getting exhausted, stressed, or burnt out. Uh, also, if you're starting out your prep and you're not sure where to go or what your challenge areas are, you can check out my practice exam mini course. It's a great place to start. It'll take you through your first practice exam and help you analyze your own strengths and weaknesses so you can build a solid prep plan moving forward. All right, so let's get back into using flashcards for your prep. When do you use them and how? First, do not use flashcards when you're starting to learn a subject, okay? So if you're learning organic chemistry for the first time or relearning it after a few years, you don't wanna start with flashcards. It'll give you a really disjointed and incomplete understanding of the material, and it can actually make it harder to apply concepts on testing. Instead, I want you to start off by learning material through active practice questions, videos, books, taking notes, and do a couple passes of the material. Then, once you've figured out exactly what your brain is not remembering, that's when you build a flashcard deck. For example, let's say you reviewed organic chemistry and you're realizing, you know what, I just don't have the functional groups memorized. That's a perfect opportunity to build a functional groups flashcard deck. Now, when you're building flashcard decks, you want to think about what's appropriate to put on them versus what's not appropriate. I like to think about it by what question are you answering? What and when questions are perfect to put on a flashcard? For example, what is an ether? An ether has a structure that looks like this. It's very clear what is an ether. This is an ether, right? And so it's a very simple, straightforward answer that you can put on a flashcard without taking up too much space. A question that's not appropriate for a flashcard is, how do we make an ether from an alcohol? Answering that question requires understanding of organic reactivity rules, reagents, conditions, maybe connections to similar reactions that go in the same category. None of that's going to fit on a flashcard and it's not going to benefit you because you're not going to be able to see that whole connection to the other reactions you'll need to know in organic chemistry. So how and why questions are much better suited for like a study guide or note taking where you can draw out multiple things in one area, whereas what and when questions are perfect for flashcards because they have clear, short answers. So now we know what goes on flashcards. So I want you to follow three rules when you're building your own decks. Number one, one term per card. Number two, 
only information you do not remember goes on cards, and three, no more than 30 cards per deck. Let's go into these a little bit more. So one term per card. This is to make it really clear whether you know the information or not. So that way you're not saying, well, I know half of the card, but not the other half. So we want to keep the cards very simple. One question, one answer. For example, let's go back into our functional groups flashcard deck we're building. Let's say you want to build carboxylic acids, esters, and amides. All of those are their own functional groups, so they should each get their own card but all of them fall under the umbrella category of carboxylic acid derivatives. And maybe you wanna note that they all kind of fall into the same category. Instead of putting them all in the same card, just write a note at the bottom of every card that says carboxylic acid derivative so that you know that they go in the same category and they should stay together. You can even color code cards that go together or make a little star or label as long as you're putting the terms on separate cards and then keeping the categories in the same deck. Rule number two, only put things you don't know on flashcards. I do not want you to make flashcards on things you already know. I know it feels good to see them, but this is not a completion game and it's just gonna dilute your decks and make it harder to find the things and review the topics that you don't know. So if you knew what an ester was, don't put it on a flashcard. Exclusively keep your flashcards for things that you don't know or find it really hard to remember. So that way, when you're reviewing those flashcards, it's only things that need to get into your brain that aren't there already. Finally, keeping your decks to 30 cards each. You can have many decks, but each group of cards should only be 20 to 30 cards so that you can review them in 15 to 20 minutes. Remember, one of the big benefits of flashcards is spaced repetition, reviewing them over and over and over again. If your decks are too big, you're not gonna get through the whole deck and you're gonna miss out on the benefit of having a flashcard deck in the first place. So if you do find that you're making a deck that's more than 30 cards, subdivide it out into smaller categories. All right, we built our decks and now it's time to review them. I'm gonna show you the five steps that I found to be the most effective when reviewing flashcard decks. So let's start with step one. You're gonna grab a deck, remember this should be 30 cards or less, and you're gonna go through them, sorting the cards into I know this or I don't know this pile. Anything that you're unsure about or don't know goes into the I don't know this pile. Anything you're confident in goes into the I know this pile. Going through the deck once should take about 10 to 15 minutes. Step two is to then take the I don't know this pile and go through it two more times. If there are any terms that you get correct both run-throughs, that card moves to the I know this pile. So if you get it right twice after going through the I don't know pile, it moves back to I know this. Then you've done your deck for the day. The next day, come back and repeat steps one and two with just the I don't know this pile. So you're going to go through, sort into I don't know versus I know, and then you're going to go through the I don't knows twice, and anything that gets two corrects in a row moves to the I know this pile. You're then going to repeat these steps every day until all the cards end up in the I know this pile. Once they're all back in the I know this pile, you start over from scratch with step one. Once you get to the point where you can get through all of the cards in a deck and all of them are I know this the first time around, that deck is complete. You've learned it. You can put it off to the side or you can come back and check it once every few weeks or once a month until your test day just to ensure that that material stays fresh. All right, we now know how to build and review your own flashcard decks. I wanted to finish this video by talking about pre-made decks. A lot of my students ask, hey, I've heard about these Anki decks like Miles Down or Jack Sparrow, or I've seen these pre-made decks that are on the App Store, should I use those in my prep? And my short answer is no, all right? I don't love pre-made decks for three major reasons. Number one, they are not made for you. That means that there's gonna be a lot of cards in there that you either don't need to remember or already know. So it's very diluted. You're gonna spend a lot of time reviewing things you already understand or are not relevant for your understanding on the MCAT. Just wasted time, right? It's nice to have those little dopamine boosts of I know this, but if you already know it, we shouldn't be studying it. So it's not made for you when they're pre-made decks and they often are kind of time wasters that make you feel like you're studying when you're not really making much improvement. Number two, they're not made by you. Remember what I said at the beginning of this video? There's a ton of research on the fact that memorization works best when you learn things in your own words with your own understanding and write them down yourselves. If you're learning other people's words and definitions, it's just not gonna stick as well, and it may actually get confused with other ideas in your brain. 
And number three, they are questionable sources, all right? No one's verifying these Anki decks. No one's making sure that they're relevant to the MCAT, correct information, the right difficulty level, right? I don't know if those cards are giving you correct information or information that will actually help you get questions correct. By making your own decks, you can guarantee that you're putting stuff on there that you got wrong in practice that will help you get questions correct in the future. These pre-made decks, I don't know. I don't know if they're going to help you or not. And so therefore they're questionable in terms of their validity and their source. So would I choose to use them? Not necessarily. However, I know that even saying all of that, students are still going to use pre-made decks because it's a popular choice of resource. So I do have a few suggestions. If you love using pre-made decks and you're going to continue using it, please try to follow these three rules when you are going through those decks. Number one, immediately delete cards you already know. So that way your deck is not diluted, right? You're paring it down to stuff you don't know. Number two is to make sure that you're breaking them up into those smaller 20 to 30 card decks instead of having like several thousand cards to go through every day. And number three, try to rewrite the answers, like the answer side of the card in your own words or simplify it or write a diagram, but make it your own. You can edit a lot of those decks, make sure you're editing them as you go, especially the cards that you consistently get wrong or find hard to remember. By doing these three things, it actually makes the pre-made decks more effective for you in your studying. All right, I hope that was helpful and that you'll try out a few of those flashcard skills that we discussed in this video. As always, there's lots more to talk about when we're talking MCAT prep, so stay tuned for future videos, and as always, happy studying.